Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. I am here with my monthly unboxing of the Freckle Fawn kit. And whenever I do an unboxing, I also do a project, so stick around for both parts. But for now, let's dive into the goodies in this package. All right, here is my Freckle Fawn kit that comes in the mail every month. If you're new here, welcome. And I will give you some information on Freckled Fawn if you don't already know. And if you're a regular viewer, thank you so much for being here. And I hope you'll bear with me as I explain some of this to our new viewers. All right, Freckled Fawn offers various components and you can sign up for a single component or you can find sign up for various components. I have the main kit and then I add on the collection of die cuts. So you can see this time around we have lots of floral die cuts. Now here's what my main kit looks like. I signed up for the 6x8 main kit. There is a 12x12 12 if you're a full size scrapbooker. Um, I like this size better because one, it's cheaper to ship and I appreciate saving a little bit of money there. And two, I just want a little bit of goodies to play with every month and I don't feel like I need all, you know, full size sheets. And three, I'm pretty good at using these smaller size sheets and, and combining them to create a 12 by 12 layout when I do 12 by 12s, which is most of the time. And in fact, that is where my project's gonna go today is I'm gonna use these smaller page sizes to create a full layout. So if you're curious about how I do that, do stick around. As you can see from the unboxing, we've got a range of pattern papers. There's two of each sheet, so you can use the A side and the B side. We've got a puffy alpha and then two sheets of cardstock sticker alphas. Um, there's always some kind of wood veneer piece. This time we have some florals. We always get um, enamel dots of some sort, chipboard stickers cardstock stickers, and some kind of washi tape. And this time it is washi tape sheets. All right, I've kind of unboxed everything and spread them some things out. I did grab this number two from my February kit. I'm finding, uh, I've only been subscribing to Freckled Fawn since, since January, and I'm finding their chipboard always includes the number of the month. And so I went back to my February kit and grabbed the number two because the photos I have, which you can see are snowy floral photos, are going to be about a snow event that happened here um, or last year in February. So I wanted that number two for this one instead of the number four that comes with the April kit. All right, here is where I start working my pattern papers. I am going to do a kind of a thirds breakdown of this 12 by 12 size. So the first top two pieces will be full six by eight sheets and then the bottom piece, I'm going to piece together two other pieces. And using diagonals is great because you can match up the pattern and keep it looking continuous across the layout. So that is my plan for that bottom section. Obviously, I will need to trim it down because it doesn't exactly line up um, neatly. So I'm okay with that. I will use those off cuts from something else. Now, I did swap out one of those top patterns because it was a heavy floral. And I decide I want to use these embellishments and for me this is going to be a pretty heavily embellished layout which I don't often do. My layouts tend to be very full but not always very heavily embellished so I am just having fun playing with a lot of stuff today and I have to say that this layout was inspired by a sketch in a sketch class that I'm taking over at the SCT magazine company. They offer periodic classes and I am taking a year-long sketch class over there. I love sketches. I even design sketches and offer them for free on my blog. But just because I make my own doesn't mean I don't find value in other people's sketches because I love sketches. They are great jumping off points for inspiration. And that is what I was inspired by today was the sketch that had lots of stripes of pattern paper on it. But I'm going to use stripes of embellishments instead of pattern paper. And so that is why I'm going so heavy on my embellishments this time around. So once I've got kind of a basic gauge to how everything's going, I did temporarily place some of my items down and I'm liking how it, the direction it's heading and I'm feeling confident that I can keep working on it and make it what I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and glue into place those first pieces that were just kind of, you know, trial runs to get started. Um, so there is the focal of my embellishing, which is this beautiful line of florals going down the middle. 
and I think they offset my snowy flower pictures very nicely and uh, that's why I was excited to work on this particular story with this kit. <clears throat> I am zhuzhing up those flowers a little bit to give them some depth so that some of them will overlap my photos and some of them will tuck behind my photos. All right, I'm moving on to another stripe of what otherwise could be um, pattern paper, but again, embellishing here. So I'm using washi tape for this next stripe, and I did have a little bit of a challenge because I'm putting it down after the fact, and I have to kind of wrangle it into place, but a T-ruler is definitely going to help me get it to line up with that top piece. And the reason I cut this apart is because you're not even gonna see what's under that photo. So I'm gonna make my supplies last longer by cutting it apart and stretching it that way and not using up all of the washi tape from my kit. All right, my next stripe is gonna be some circle um, stickers from the cardstock sticker pack. And I'm gonna overlay those with the stars from the chipboard pack. So this is a multifunctional strip there with circles and stars going on. And as I am feeling like those strips of embellishments are coming into place. I will tack my photos down. They are on dimensional foam so that I have room for all of those layers to go underneath there. And then before I moved on any farther, I wanted to get my title down and I'm gonna go ahead and put my title on that same strip orientation. And I know that makes it a little bit harder to read, but um, I'm okay with that because I really like the style of it. And it's not so complex of a title that it won't translate well enough. All right, I am getting another stripe of washi tape because I want to make sure I'm balancing elements as I go. If I put one thing somewhere, I want it not to be the only style of that thing on the layout so that um, it shows up somewhere else on the layout. Here again, with my stripe of washi, I am cutting it apart so that I don't have to use up all my washi to go the full length since it will be covered up mostly. Now I'm going to get a row of enamel dots going, and this is definitely something I would not ordinarily do because, you know, these, these embellishments aren't cheap. They do cost us money. And I remember when I first started scrapbooking, when I saw very heavily embellished layouts, I used to get frustrated because I'm like, okay, that one's 50 cents and that one's 50 cents and that one's 50 cents. Um, so I used to get frustrated with the heavily embellished layouts. But now that I am getting these um, compact kits in the mail. Yes, they still cost money, but this is the main new stuff that comes into my space on a regular basis. And I continue using up all my older supplies through other projects. I feel like when I'm getting these new things, I'm keeping my budget in mind with saving on shipping and only picking and choosing the elements that I know I will use most. Um, then I feel like I can really go ahead and use what I've bought and use it how it makes me happy. And so I'm not just hoarding it and buying it to keep it and being worried about using it. And so that is one of the ways I have kind of overcome feeling budget limitations. And I honestly, my budget is very different than now than it was when I first started scrapbooking, but that um, mindset kind of has held on for a very long time. So every once in a while, it's really nice to kind of break out of those old habits and do something different from what I usually do and go ahead and use as many beautiful embellishments as I want on the layout. And I think these photos really kind of called for what I've got going on. All right, that's just a little bit about me and my scrappy, my scrappy world. I am moving on to yet another stripe and I'm I did keep that one really subtle at first, and you'll see me change it up a little bit later as I realize that it is out of balance with other steps, with other parts of the layout. All right, speaking of balance, I have a very bold green title on that side, so I wanna bring some more bolder color to the left side of the layout. So I'm gonna use this darker floral washi tape, and I don't want to detract too much from the title, but I want it to balance and complement the title. So while you see me put a lot of the tape down here, I am gonna go ahead and trim off that longer strip as I see I'm saving even the little tiny scrap of washi tape that I cut off and rarely do I ever go back and use those teeny tiny things. So I need to let go of some of that budget mindedness I've mentioned. 
all right, I was realizing I have one more space for another stripe and I started filling in with more chipboard, which I, I knew I wanted to add a row of chipboard besides the stars, but putting that much chipboard next to the already existing chipboard stars was too much. It was too much over there. And this is where I realized that one piece of washi tape that I put under my title was pretty soft spoken in terms of the whole overall visual um, appeal of the title. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move my chipboard on top of that piece of washi tape. And again, I will have dual duty with this stripe. While some stripes are just die cuts or just enamel dots, some of my stripes are multiple items. So I've got the stars with the cardstock stickers and here I've got washi tape with chipboard stickers. So that does leave this one uh, side of the layout again needing something and that's when I look in my tray and realize oh I haven't even touched the wood veneer pieces from the kit and I'm going to use them all um you know the, again this was <laughs> you can see me clapping I was very excited about how that balanced very well with the the rest of the layout now in between those um wood veneers I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more of the die cut pieces and I'm going to cut these apart so I can mix and match them and not overwhelm the layout so that I have better balance that way and I am using the softer colors instead of you can see I have that one very bold pink flower at the bottom I'm going to stick with just the softer colors so that they layer in with the chipboard elements but they're not competing with or not chipboard sorry with the um, wood veneer elements but they're not competing with the wood veneer all right, and here's kind of a final look at how that is all pulled together. I've got some of those flowers cut apart so that I can tuck them in very carefully. And I'm going to hide those cut off edges to make it look like all of that was purposeful with the rest of these things. I do use heavy things from my desk sometimes to help hold glue in place while I continue working on the rest of the layout. All right, that wraps up what I have for this layout. It's definitely a little bit of a different style for me, still full bodied, but full of lots of beautiful embellishments that nicely show off those photos that had me super excited. I hope you love it as much as I do. I'm leaving you here with a few still photos before I head out to say goodbye. And I should be back one more time this week with another video for you. So until then, I hope you have an artful day.